Jeremy Fletcher uses his phone to take pictures of the countryside, even in his lunch hour. But it was while he was taking an evening stroll on the seashore at Snettersham in Norfolk that he noticed a godlike figure staring back at him from the clouds. Divine proof, maybe? After the first two or three, I, I looked at what I had on my phone and I couldn't believe the image that was on there. It was so clearly a face in the sky looking straight back at me. As the Lord took delight in doing it good and multiplying it, so the Lord will take delight in bringing ruin upon you and destroying it. And you shall be plucked off the land that you are entering to take possession of. Because they have forsaken my law that I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice but walked in accord with it, but have stubbornly followed their own hearts, and have gone and failed as their fathers taught them, and went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they had not known, and whom he had not allotted to them. Therefore the land of the world is kindled against this land, bringing upon it all the curses written in this book. Therefore the Lord declares, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I speak unto thee this day, and I say, keep your vision ever upon me, keep moving forward in me, keep walking in my way. For I say, if any man will truly be my disciple, then I say that he must follow me. That is, he must not return or look back to the things that are behind, for to do so makes him unfit. But I say that he must continue to move onward, to move forward in me. Now I say you are living in a time when men and women have so given themselves over to emotional involvement that they cannot keep their vision upon me. That is, they allow the relationships, the ties of this earth to be monumental and their commitment unto me to be minimal in their lives. And I say because they are so doing, I say they are grief and a sorrow unto me. For I say they are not keeping me as the utmost importance, but I say they have given themselves to other gods. Now I say it is possible for a man to allow himself to be overwhelmed by carnal emotion, by, dis by the disturbance of the same. And I say it is possible for a man to be yielded to that which is darkness and not even realize what he does. For I say that it is indeed regarding the relationships of carnality of more importance than his relationship unto me, no such a man is a fool. For I say that he may indeed wear himself out, exhaust his resources, and it is all for naught. For I say when it is finished and he stands before me, it is not what he's done with human relationships, but I say it is what he has done with me. That is, has he walked in the way, has he completed the course, has he done those things, that are well pleasing unto me. For I say it is me, the living God, that my people are men to please, to serve, to obey, and follow after. And it is me, the living God, who will indeed direct, uplift, correct, and instruct the ones who are mine. Now I say this day that I, the living God, have intended that my own people would walk uprightly, would be directed and corrected by me. That is, I've intended that they would be coming forth, may glad for their privilege, to keep on serving, to keep on loving, to keep on following after. For I say, when the ones who are mine will serve with thanksgiving and gladness, then I say they are found approved of me. But I say, when the ones who are mine will walk afar off, will walk according to their own carnal understanding, I say that they are the fools. For I say that I, the living God, never called my people to look back, to turn aside, to go in a way that I've never ordained. But I say that I've intended that my people would continue steadfastly to move forward in me. That is, to obey my commands, to move onward and upward in the way that I provide, not looking back to the carnal plane, to the fleshly attachments, and thinking they are more important than my way. For I say there's a way that seems right unto men, but that way will destroy them. I say you are living in a time when many of those who claim that they are my people have taken up idols, have given themselves over to emotional involvements, and yes, they are weak through it all. That is, they are desperately needy 
of repenting and repenting and returning unto me as their first love, the one they are meant to please. That is, they are meant to return to discipleship unto me, that is, consecration unto my way. But I say, because they have given themselves to idols, then I say they are overwhelmed in the emotion of the same. Now I say this day that by the living God do call the ones who are to be my disciples to keep me as the utmost person of their lives. That is, not putting other people, nor places, nor things above me, for I say those, th those things become other gods. That is, when a man will allow his carnality to go out to other lovers other than me and give himself over unto the same to where he is preferring those people, places, and things above me, what does he do? I say that he takes himself out of the role of following me into the place of loving things more than me. And I say when he does that, then he becomes in a grief and a sorrow and a shame to me. Now I say this day that I the living God am calling for those who have forsaken me as the very utmost importance in their lives to return unto me. That is, I'm calling for men and women to repent, to turn from their idolatry, to turn from their adultery, and return to me. For I say, if they do not repent, then I say they will be found unfit, unworthy of what it is that I, the living God, had intended for them. And I say they will find themselves in a place of estrangement from my arrangement because they have loved other gods. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to be entangled with the affairs of this life until you forget about me. That is, I do not call thee to take up those things that will only bring you pain and sorrow in your life. But I say that I call thee to be moving onward, upward in me, to be ever thankful for my way. And I say that I call thee to be directed, corrected, and guided forth by me. Now I say, therefore, this day, count it a privilege to keep your vision single, count it a privilege to keep on in obedience unto me. And I say, if you find that you have indeed grown slack in your commitment, then I say, repent and return unto me. That is, be ever active and alert to guard against the forces of darkness that would seek to erode your relationship unto me and make other lovers more important than I. I say those things are nothing but demonic in the sense that they seek to interfere with your love for me. Now I say it is me, the living God, you are meant to be serving. It is me, the living God, you are meant to be faithful and true unto. That is, you are meant to walk uprightly in the blessedness, the truth, and the light that I give day by day. And you are meant to be thankful each day that it is me that you can continue to look to, to believe, to trust, obey, and follow after. For I say it is me, the living God, who is indeed the way of righteousness revealed, the way of mercy and truth, and the way that is hope provided. Therefore I say in a wicked, a vile, a corrupted, and evil generation, be thankful, ever thankful unto me. That is, be thankful that I am indeed the life source, the one who is able to direct and correct thee always. And I say, be thankful that I purpose thee in that which I intend, which is the truth and the light upon the path. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is the way of all righteousness, the way of all truth, and the way that is mercy provided. And it is me, the living God, who will show to the ones who love me the way of eternal life. Now I say this day that I, the living God, when I walk this earth as a man, gave the call to all men to repent and to follow me. And I say that I gave the call to abandonment of all in order to be my disciples. That is, not holding to anything or anybody as a way of being pulled back and apart from me. But I say literally forsaking those things that are behind to go forward in the way that I provide. For I say it is me, the living God, who delights to impart my joy, my strength, my mercy unto those who will indeed cleave unto me. That is, the ones who will believe in me and trust in me, for I am indeed well able. For I say it is a wondrous, a beautiful, and a blessed thing to be found abiding in the truth, the light, and the strength of who I am, and to continue in the way that I lead, which is the way of eternal life. Therefore I say this day, be glad for the privilege to believe, to receive, to come forth in me time and again. And I say, be thankful that I give unto thee the blessedness 
the truth, and the light always. Be thankful that you can indeed be brought forth, knowing that through me you are given the hope and the peace, the strength, the safety day by day. For I say it is me, the living God, who is all righteousness revealed. It is me, the living God, who is all mercy and truth and the hope provided for those who will keep following me. Therefore I say this day continue in the way that I give, which is the way of the upright, and be partaking of me. That is, be ever thankful that I am the one who is truth and light, strength and mercy and hope intended day by day. And I say, be thankful that I am the one who does ever direct, correct, and bring forth the ones who are believing in me. For I say, if it is me that you look to in faith and trust and confidence, it is me, the living God, who brings thee forth. And it is me, the living God, who will ever direct thee in the truth, the light, and the mercy of who I am each and every day. Now I say this day, do not get overwhelmed with the attachments, the involvements of this carnal plane, and lose out with me. For I say you are not meant to be so tied to the earthly kingdom that you forget you are meant to be the citizens of my heavenly kingdom and follow me. For I say there are those who start out to obey me, to follow me. Then I say they look back, they get entangled again with the affairs of this life. Then I say they lose out with me. And I say they go in a way that will prove to be sorrow, distress of soul, and damnation in the end. For I say, when any man turns back from following me to take up the way that he was in before he gave himself to me, then I say that he's departed from being my disciple. And I say that he's not worthy of the kingdom that I, the living God, came to declare. Therefore, I say, do not allow yourselves to be tempted to return to the flesh, to be tempted to return to emotionalism of carnal attachments and lose out with me. But I say, be daily in repentance, revolution, the humility way of life that I provide, keeping your vision single unto me. Now there are even doctrines of devils that teach a man that the attachments of his flesh are more important than my kingdom and that he should give himself to the same. But I say such teaching is not of me, but I say it is the enemy who is sent to devour. For I say when a man will believe that he must indeed fulfill what it is that he's held responsible for in the flesh more than fulfill me, no such a man has turned back from me. That is, he has taken up the way of the world rather than the way of my spirit. For I say that a man's commitment and obedience unto me is the thing that matters in this life. For I say, if a man will seek to please me, obey me, and follow after me, then I say that he's found well pleasing unto me. But I say, when any man or woman will turn back to carnality, I say they are returning to death. I say that I, the living God, do not call you to look back, to turn back, but I say that I call you to move onward in me. That is, uplifted, directed, and ever guided in the truth, the light, the blessedness of who I am. Therefore, I say, continue as a steadfast people who are believing, trusting, and hoping in me day by day. And I say, be thankful to be directed, guided, and instructed in me. That is, to be given the purpose, the plan, the truth, and the light of who I am each and every day. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is the way of righteousness, the way of truth, and the way that is mercy provided. Therefore, I say, be thankful even now that you can continue to trust me, believe me, and walk uprightly in me, for I am thy God. And I say, it is me, the living God, who will direct thee in the way of my truth and my life, the way of my mercy revealed. And it is me, the living God, who will shine the light upon the path that you can indeed be guided always by me. That is, that you can be coming forth, make glad for the privilege to believe, the privilege to receive, and come forth in me. Now I say this day, if you find yourself lacking in obedience, lacking in desire, lacking in love for me, I say repent. For I say, if you will indeed continue steadfast in my way through repentance, revolution, then you will be found worthy of me. And I say, you will be a true disciple, not a pretender, a faker, or those who follow the lust of their flesh. But I say that you will come forth ever faithful and true to me. 
For I say you are not meant to look back nor turn aside, but I say you are meant to keep single, that is, ever following in obedience unto me, thy maker, thy God, and repenting every day and coming into the humility way and following always. So that will he also reap. But the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. Commanded by God. You're commanded by God to repent. You're commanded by God.